This is the Code Dot, a tiny hacking tool that fits in your pocket, and I'm gonna show you why it's awesome. If you've seen my channel before, you've seen a ton of different Kickstarters before. I don't think any device has got me to stop and say, okay, yeah, that's pretty cool, more than this device. It's super small, it's sleek, and it actually checks a whole lot of boxes of things that I want when I'm looking for a small creator tool. Not only can it hack because it does have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and bad USB right out of the box, but also the GPIO on here can hook up to servo motors, LEDs, all sorts of cool stuff making this one of the most fun little gadgets I've played with in a long time. And I never thought I'd say this, but this thing actually has AI and it's really freaking cool. I have covered a ton of ESP32 based devices. And honestly, at this point, this guy's right up there is one of my favorite. All right, that's enough intro. This is Code Dot. Also, really quick shout out to my boy Grits. Thanks so much for the t-shirts. Check them out on nerdt.shop. All right, let's switch up to the top-down camera. All right, so here is Code Dot. They even gave me a cool little charging station, which obviously it's a little bootleg. You know, it's got some wires, it's 3D printed. But again, this is an engineering sample. Got a super cute little mascot with a little soldering iron, and a little computer on the side, which is cool. And I even saved the peeler for you guys. Here we go. Yeah, that was pretty satisfying. As I've mentioned before, this is an ESP32 S3 based device and it's on Kickstarter. It's over $100,000 already. And if they hit $500,000, they're gonna add NFC and RFID to this, which would make this thing absolutely crazy. So let's get directly into the hacking stuff because I know that's what y'all came for. But make sure you stick around because in a few minutes, I'm gonna be showing off AI controlled servos and LEDs and a bunch of really cool stuff. So first things first, let's hop directly into Wi-Fi spam. Now what's cool about this Wi-Fi spam is it's not just like all the other ones where it spams a ton of access points. No, this one drops its own captive portal. And if you log into it, it shows a special message. We'll see that now there's a code free Wi-Fi. Let's connect to that and then bam, it pulls up this website. I love this implementation of basically what's an evil portal. It's a really cool idea. I love that. Let's stop this. Whoops. Cool, didn't break it. This thing's actually pretty well made for what it is. If we take a real close look at the case, it's really nice quality, it's sturdy, and considering it's an engineering sample, this thing's actually really good. It's got a really nice back to it. The quick connector right there makes it really easy to put on the little charger over there. I kind of like that feature as well. So let's keep moving and hop into Bluetooth scan. So Bluetooth scan does just that. It's gonna go and scan all the Bluetooth devices that are around me. Let's see what we come up with. And it's found seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow, it's found a lot of devices. There's tons of stuff in here. It's still picking up more stuff. I don't even know what all this stuff is. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's keep moving. Let's check out Bad USB. Bad USB is automatic code injection via USB. You plug a USB into your device and into a computer, and it will either automatically upload a code or it will upload a code that you tell it to. Let's plug this into USB and I'll show you what it does. We'll go ahead and grab our USB cable plug that in and then bam, it says armed. So if we hop on down to the desktop, I'm just gonna load up notepad. All we gotta do is press the icon, just like you should press that like button, please. There we go, and it's running, look at that. That's pretty cool. This will run any bad USB script you feed it. There are a ton of places out there to find a lot of automations that you can do through bad USB. It's a really great feature. Very, very useful. Editing Sasquatch here. So here's some inside information. Now I can't confirm that this is true or not, but I was talking with the developers of Code Dot and they said that it was possible for their AI to actually generate bad USB scripts on the fly. So you could basically just ask the Code Dot to run a bad USB script that did something like open a calculator and it would just figure it out and do it. If this is the case, this product is ridiculously powerful. All right, so that's some of the quote hacking features that it has. And remember, if they add NFC and RFID, there'll be way more options in the future, which could be really cool. So let's hop out of here. Let me show you the stuff that I really, really had fun doing right after this quick segue to today's sponsor, PCB Way. PCB Way is your one-stop shop for all things PCB design, manufacture, 3D printing, CNC, sheet metal fabrication, and so much more. And don't forget, PCB Way is running their eighth annual project design contest. Creators from around the world are competing for the best electronic project, mechanical project, or AIoT project. If you're a maker and want to compete, follow the link down below and let's see what you got. Thank you so much to PCB Way for your continued support. You guys are absolutely awesome. All right, let's get back at it. Now, this device is really one of those I came for the hacking, but I stayed for all the other cool stuff it does. So let's start plugging in different devices and showing you how that works. So let's go ahead and grab our simple prototype board. It's just a breadboard that plugs into the top. This is one of the things that this is such a clever idea. I don't know why Flipper Zero never made a plug-in breadboard. This thing is freaking 
brilliant. So if we go over here, we're gonna load up Cute Assistant. This is something that I never ever thought would be that cool. This is AI. And normally on a device like this, and I'm like, AI is stupid. There's no reason for this to have AI. There is a reason for this to have AI, and it's super freaking cool. And this is our Cute Assistant. It just hangs around and waits for instructions. So right now we've got the breadboard, and we have an LED with a resistor hooked up to GPIO1 up here. See? So let's do this. Flash LED on GPIO1 five times. Cover that light up. There it is. It's flashing the GPIO1 LED five times just because we asked it to. That's pretty cool in my opinion. Turn on LED at GPIO1. And yeah, the screen just says the LED on GPIO pin one is now turned on. Let's try something else. Flash SOS on the LED at GPIO1. Okay, this one's a little bit more complicated, so it's thinking. All right, that is freaking cool. It figured out what the actual Morse code for SOS is, and it made it flash on GPIO1. It's such a cool thing to be able to do directly on the device, but we have more cool stuff to plug in here. So let's go over and grab this. Ugh, hard to unplug this. And here we have our stepper controller. This is going to be difficult. Man, it is super, super hard to hold this thing so you can see it, but I think this will work. And I did notice with the big servo, it helps to have the USB plugged in, I think. Maybe I'm just making that up, but we'll find out. So let's try this. Rotate servo on GPIO 13 four times and rotate servo on GPIO 11 twice. And with just a little thinking, now it says, let's get those servos moving in sequence. That's so cool. For some reason, it defaults to keep this on, but we can get it to stop. Stop servo. Well, I'm an idiot. What's going on is that the servo is running directly into the microphone, so it has absolutely no idea what I'm saying. Stop servo on GPIO 13. Hey, there we go. <laughs> that was fun. All right, and let's go over the last GPIO board, which is the camera. So this has a little camera board right there. It's very, very cool, very small plug it into the top facing away. One of the things you can do is actually take a picture with the camera and then run that through the AI system, which, you know, could be useful. And don't worry, I'm gonna go over a bunch more of these apps in just a second. Oh, you can't see, but it's very oversaturated. Oh yeah, yeah, it's working great right now. So it's not the best camera in the world, but um, let me see if I can turn down the brightness so you can see this. If I turn the exposure on my camera way, way down, you can see it works pretty good. And yeah, if I hold down this button for a second, it'll actually take a picture and save it to the SD card. Wait for it. Very, very cool. It's not the most high frame rate camera in the world, but it does work, which is really cool for a device like this. I know we had a Flipper Zero add-on camera, but this seems at least almost useful because remember, this has AI, so you can do a lot more with it. So let's pop this off and take a look at the rest of the features. All right, so here we are back at the main screen. It does have a Bluetooth Air Mouse and a Slides remote and an app launcher, which will launch things on your computer. As you may know, if you've been a long time watcher, the uh, Bluetooth on my computer is completely borked and it does not work, so I can't show off any of those oh well and then we can go to let's go to games last because there's actually some pretty cool stuff in there we have a timer and then here is gpt so this is just the normal gpt that you could run in this let's click yes and let's see what this gpt can do kick our exposure back down so we can see what is a flipper zero and after a couple seconds it says flipper zero is a portable multi-tool device for hacking and something something it looks like it kind of ran out of space the firmware is so new that there are some bugs here and there but that's to be expected this is an engineering sample these things happen so let's get out of here let's go through everything else that we have on here that's cool to show off one of the great things about CodeDot is that it runs Code OS, so you can make your own application. So instead of flashing the entire device to do a different application, you can just load it through Code OS. So let's take a look at the uh, Bitcoin Tracker app. Hey, here we are. It has a Bitcoin price at $110,000. Man, I wish I didn't sell mine when I had it. Now, one thing I noticed, and this only really matters because of filming, is that the brightness levels on the apps don't necessarily match the desktop. So it makes it a little harder for me to film. It actually looks fantastic in real life. It has a really nice screen. So let's test out uh, Tilt Labyrinth. Let's see how this works. I'm gonna have to drop the exposure again. Sorry, guys, like way down. Here we go. But you can see it's just it's a tilt little labyrinth game. Oh, oh, you can't hit the red things. Oh, I understand now. Come on. Come on. Now, obviously, this works because there's a nine axis sensor in here, which knows exactly which direction we're tilting in. Come on. Too scared. There it is. 
Hey, I finished level one. Kill me. So that's Code Dot. This tiny little device is becoming one of my favorite little toys to play around with. Now, this little guy does run about $130. And if that sounds interesting to you, check him out on the Kickstarter link down below. And remember, it's a hacking tool, but it's also kind of a really good tinkering tool. So maybe you can convince your parents to let you get one. So what do you think about Code Dot? I genuinely would like to hear your feedback because I think it's really cool. So leave a comment down below. All right, we'll catch you next time.